Welcome to Discovery Indie Film. I'm your host, Jeff Howard, and I've got Jean Villapeak on Zoom. Hey, Jean. Hey, Jeff. And I think I screwed up in, in the interview podcast. The one before this, I didn't mention that we are Zooming, even though I think we probably live in not too far apart because of COVID, because of the new world and convenience. This is Zoom. So I normally say uh, if someone doesn't like the audio quality, I apologize. It's not our fault. It's my fault. I couldn't get it together schedule wise to get closer. So well, but it's nobody's fault. It's just, but honestly, Zoom sounds pretty good. Zoom. I mean, heck, those the most popular podcasts in the world are recorded on Zoom nowadays. I think so. But we were on Zoom, and uh, Gene wrote and starred in a short film called IV Effing, which was fantastic, and it was at the Sherman Oaks Film Festival in 2019. Or it won Best Short Film Comedy, the Grand Jury Prize. So we were just talking about her film, IVFing, and her life and career in the previous podcast. This podcast is going to be a four questions, which means Jean is going to answer favorite films of all time, an underrated film, an overrated film, and a lesser known film that people should seek out. After like a year of the podcast, we actually had like a backyard party and all the filmmakers came and everyone talked to each other. And I was able to say, hey, your top three had Black, uh, the Dark Knight in it, and you said Dark Knight was overrated. So you two have a discussion. <laughs> it was kind Stirring of fun. Stirring up the pot. Yeah. Start fighting. But, uh, but it's fun. And uh, after Gene answers the questions, I'll mention the film festivals and the Discovery to Film TV series on Amazon Prime Video. Go look at it. Okay, fine. I mentioned it now. But uh, give it stars. Can you give that stars too? Yeah, please give everything five stars. Everyone has could... lots of stars to give. I just know they don't don't hoard your stars. Give them out. I know it really doesn't cost anything to give someone five out of five. So easy. But anyhow, um, you want to tell us your favorite films? Sure. Um, in the uh, um, let's see, when you said uh, you said three, wow. I'm, you can do you can do three yeah wow. fa- it's favorite films that mean they have to be the best in the world just the ones you've enjoyed most throughout your life but if if you really can't keep to three if there's a fourth that like oh no that's okay three's plenty three is good uh, definitely, I just don't know the order so I'll, I guess the ones I've seen the most Tootsie and then Moonstruck and then the piano I know the piano takes a slight turn from those first two but definitely yes. Definitely some comedy in there, but but such smart comedy. I used to like dumb comedy, and now I like smart. Yeah, yeah. I, I Tootsie is uh, incredible, incredible, and also the lot, the final scene in Moonstruck is one of my favorite scenes in anything I've ever seen. It's perfectly written. It it just has this huge crescendo of every character coming together, and the music even crescendos there too. Um, music is a big part of. Uh, um, why I, I like film, which is especially why I like the piano. Um, yeah, the piano is an amazing film. It's so beautiful. Remarkable. You know when, um, oh my gosh, I'm terrible with names. The young actress who's now... Uh, A- Anna Paquin? Yes, Anna Paquin. When she's in uh, the, the, not woods exactly, or jungle, I'm not sure what the landscape is called, but there are beautiful bird calls that are part of the music of that film. Not only just the incredible piano music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's so cool that Jane Campione, who did that film, is now, I don't know, it looks like she might clean up at the Oscars oh, soon she's for uh, Year of the Dog. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say, you mentioned Tootsie. I mean, Tootsie is, uh, Tootsie might be one of the best screenplays ever written. I think so. It's pretty perfect. And I, I watched a little bit about it. I think it was a, a laborious effort with Dustin Hoffman and Sidney Cindy, Cindy Pollock. I think they, there must have been a hundred different versions of it. Was that the Netflix? Netflix has that thing, the movies that made us, where they do a thing on a movie, Maybe. like a documentary. I think they might have done Tootsie, but yeah, Tootsie was. I think that's right. Yeah. It just, I had assumed it was somewhat improvised or loosely done when I had seen it many, many times. And then to realize they hammered everything out with such care um, friends and I were, were just discussing recently if it's okay. A friend of mine does, um, when she makes sure that the transcripts for TV shows are the same as a script for, um, foreign, uh, translations. And she said some actors 
completely go word for word on script and make it feel improvised and other ones are completely like there's a script and they just use it as a jumping off space. So anyway, Tootsie, I think is a great example of something that feels free and natural and um, carried away. It gets carried away, but is, is, was crafted so well. Yeah. So well crafted and not, not to favor it more than your other choices, but, but, uh, and the casting, I mean, Early Bill Murray, Gina Davis's first appearance on screen. I mean, Bill Murray's a straight man in it too. I mean, he's just like, yeah. yeah. And, Although uh, he is unbelievably funny when he calls uh, Dustin Hoffman's character a slut. <laughs> oh yeah, that scene when my husband and I were dating, uh, we watched that, and I had the I had it on a DVD, and for some reason, this DVD I don't think they had any extras or anything, but they had it in French, so we watched. There's a scene at the end where Dustin Hoffman is like taking off his eyelashes and he's like, I'm Edward Kimberly when he reveals that it's a man playing a woman. And in French, it is extremely hilarious. I don't know what the word for slut is. They probably don't have a word for slut in France because it's not, there's no shame. Because they're not as uptight and yes. stupid. <laughs> they have Dustin Hoffman like, Je suis Edward Kimberly. Je suis. It was hilarious. So I highly recommend watching that in French too. That would be great. That'd be great. All right. Well, the second question is uh, underrated. I, ho- I don't know if it is underrated. To me, when I bring it up to people, they're like, oh, yeah, but the science of sleep. Um, I absolutely love that film. And I feel like uh, more people, and maybe people who know film and study film know it really well, but I think more people who um, are just living their lives getting entertained here and there would really love it if they had more of an opportunity to see it. I don't know. You know, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. So you're bumping it up my list. Okay. It's so imaginative and beautiful and inspiring. It's, it's a great story. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, question three is over a film that's overrated. Uh, Well, I, (laughs) I, I couldn't think, I didn't want to drag any film and I didn't because I am not, who am I? But um, I think the genre, the mafia genre is completely overrated to me. I, I can't really relate to it in any way. And I feel like we don't need, we don't need any more mafia movies. I, you know what? I'm with you a hundred percent and I can, you know, there's a couple of great ones and then yeah. the rest of it, yeah, I when I watch it now, especially when they someone else tries to revisit it, whether it's bringing breathing something new into it or not, I'm like, they're just criminals. Like, there's nothing operatic or interesting about unethical businessmen. I don't know. Yeah, the mafia thing I think is really worn out. Yeah, I really. I, I obviously there are brilliant ones in the Godfather films and uh, Goodfellas, but I think when it got to like Casino and then more and more were coming out when I was growing up, I was like how much, what new information is coming out or what new story are we telling? And also for women, it just sucks. And there's a lot of racism in that culture too. And it's just like, I feel like in the eighties, it was like, check out this crazy shit, racism or crazy shit, you know, like, and now it's like, we don't even need to check that out anymore. Let's not give it a voice. I agree. I I think it's all because the Godfather won a ton of awards. And so everyone, for some reason, there was something about mafia films that sort of had a, a glow of respectability in a way. And yeah. I think almost all of them suck. Yeah, no, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. Although I love Miller's Crossing. I got to admit Miller's Crossing, but that's a it. Coen brothers film that takes place oh. in like the early, like, I think it's the 1920s. So it's when the Irish mob is being replaced by the Italian mob. I mean, there's still, there's oh. still original things that can be done, but. Is Gabriel Byrne in that? Yes. Okay, I will see that. I have to see that. That's that's the Gabriel Byrne one. I love him. Okay. I do urge everyone. Okay, I'll watch Science of Sleep and you watch when it's crossing. I'll let you know. Right, well, the the last question where we're, we got a good pace here is uh, lesser known film that people should seek out. It's older, but The Mission. Have you seen The Mission? Well, I saw The Mission just because I'm old enough that it came out when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> so like when I was in college and you know, you, you make sure you see all the serious. Yeah. That's the Jeremy Irons, um, um, Robert De Niro. Yeah. 
the opposite of Ep- a mafia film with Robert epic King. epic film about missionaries. God, I barely remember anything about it because I imagine it was like probably eighty. Oh my gosh, I was 87, 88. Uh, that sounds right. I think it won best film, but I think it could be revisited. It's such a beautiful story. And it's also told there's a lot of incredible music. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but Ennio Morricone uh, is the, um, wrote all the music for it. And I kept the soundtrack to it for years and I listened to it a lot. And then I watched the film again a few years ago. And it's such a simple story about how you fight for what you believe in, whether the, the mission that Jeremy Irons runs is um, threatened and Robert De Niro is sort of paying this penance from a crime he committed and discovers, rediscovers himself and joy in this peaceful world. And then the mission gets threatened. And it's like Jeremy Irons is this priest who's saying, we, we don't fight. We, we use the peaceful behavior that we've been preaching. And then Robert De Niro is like, I do fight. That's you have to fight for what you believe in. So I, I love the simple storytelling that way. And I just love the music and that. The- and, and it is uh, amazingly shot, right? The cinematography down in the jungle is ridiculous. Yes. That should balance out my Tootsie for people who love film are like Tootsies shot on a soundstage, whatever this is <laughs> and the piano, but yeah, those, the waterfalls and maybe it's in Brazil. I think my husband has been there once and he said, it's just, Changes your life just to see it. It's in the first shot of the film. And by the way, I very quickly Googled it to refresh my memory. And it was it was uh, directed by Roland Joffe, who I believe, I think he might have been an Oscar-winning cinematographer who moved into directing. So no wonder, wonder. it looks so amazing. And it was actually 1986. Wow. I won't quite date myself and say what year I was in college. But, but yeah, I was in, so it was 86. Wow. wow. But it probably won the Oscar in 87, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, amazing film. I was just Great two. Kid. I was just two years old. No, I was thirteen. I don't mind dating myself. Yeah, I was thirteen, <laughs> and, and uh, I guess it was one of the first movies after the. Look, I was only. <laughs> I was eighteen. What do you know? Just fresh into college. Okay, okay. I'll challenge people to do that math. I don't care. I'm fifty three. But uh, anyhow, that is an excellent lesser known because yeah, I have a feeling that even though it won an Oscar and everything. Uh, yeah, I don't know if, if younger people coming up get around to seeing the mission. Yeah, it's not like a classic. It's just an incredible film that shouldn't just go away. Now that we're able to keep things, everything is, you can access most things a lot of the time. It should be in the mix. It's just a beautiful, especially because we're watching films at home so much. It would be nice to watch one that is so uh, visually stunning and um, not like scrambling for attention and the way people I'm not that the films are currently scrambling for attention, but it's already, it's done. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Cause yeah, now I don't want to get too into it, but, but uh, watching power of the dog, Jane Campion's uh-huh. new film, like I was sitting there watching it and I was like, I actually said to the wife, I was like, you know, uh, it's slow paced and I love it because I'm getting to appreciate the visuals and everything. And like I do think nowadays new films, even even when they are beautiful to look at, like they kind of rush through because they know we've our attention spans have shortened and they like like the mission really takes time to make you feel like you're there. There's a lot of silence in the piano is the same way too. There there's a lot of just pictures. There's a lot of just looking and feeling. And also, in, I, I think the reason I'm reaching back for some films, too, is because now there is such a need with social media to have an opinion or you see everyone else's opinion on something so quickly. It's like it's exploring this issue. How do we feel about this and that? And I, I appreciate going back in time when you just saw something without it was a personal experience watching a film, not having to articulate everything about it or um, respond to other people's opinions right away. You could just experience it. For sure. All right. Well, excellent list. Excellent films. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and I'll tell you something funny about about uh, Tootsie after I hit stop oh, recording. <laughs> you all can't hear but, it. Sorry. But, <laughs> but um, do you want to mention uh, your social media or anything? My social media handle is for Twitter and uh, Instagram is my last name. So it's at Villapique, V-I-L-L-E-P-I-Q-U-E. And it will blow your mind how... 
basic it is. <laughs> Excellent. You know what, though? There's something cool about people who don't front on social media, right? Like you're not, you're not either. bothering to be like, look how awesome and amazing. Like, I don't know. I like, I, but then again, I got a vegetable garden. I like share pictures. Like look at my Brussels sprouts, everyone. Oh, like see. if you find Brussels sprouts exciting, uh, <laughs> go to Hefe 111. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get all the Brussels sprout, uh, plants you need you out of that. Brussels sprouts for real. Yeah. That's awesome. They come on that big stock. That's so cool. It's huge. It looks like an alien from outer space, actually, like coming out of the ground. It's scary. <laughs> the terrifying <laughs> gardens of Jeff. <laughs> but, uh, well, excellent. And and now I'll mention all the things I got to mention. So at Villa Peak is you. Uh, at DIF Wins is the Discover Indie Film uh, social media. This podcast gave birth to a TV series that people should check out. It's on Amazon Prime Video. It's called Discover Indie Film, just like the podcast. So please go to that. Give it five stars. If you're listening to this podcast, feel free to give the podcast a nice review. I don't know if you can give five stars anymore. I actually have no idea. I think think you can on iTunes. Yeah. And the podcast app. So please be nice and, and give nice reviews. Um, if you want to learn more, there's also discoverindiefilm.com, and that's where like there'll be links to people's films and and websites and stuff. Gene's film IVFing won best short film, the Grand Jury Prize for best short film comedy at the Sherman Oaks Film Festival. That's how we met. So uh, if you want to learn more about the Sherman Oaks Film Festival that we hold every November, it's shermanoaksff.com, and it's at shermanoaksff on social media, and it's sister festival. Is Film Invasion Los Angeles that we hold every June, uh, right when the college kids get out of school. So, hope, so that's how we get the volunteers for the theater. <laughs> and ah, uh, nice. yeah, and you can learn about that at filminvasionla.com, and it's at filminvasionla on social media. And I think that is all the spiel I had to do. Thank you, Jean Villapique, for doing it. Thanks, Jeff Howard. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you, everyone who's listening. Yeah.